Well, I think we're ready to get started for the deep dive this morning. I want to say welcome to everybody who's joining uh, from all over the country. Uh, and we have a special guest this mor morning, George Ratu. George, welcome. Uh, excited to have you on. Thank you, David. It's great to be uh, here with you on this fine Monday. Yeah, it is. It is. I'm in New York here for the Tom Ferry event. You're in Richmond uh, at the KCM office, and we're going to kind of do this together. But uh, excited to have you on. You know, George, uh, now you know, been uh, on a few weeks as a chief economist, George, and we're so excited to have you. So uh, grateful for uh, for you joining the deep dive and being a part of this uh, this morning. So uh, as always, as people are logging on and, and joining, let us know where you're watching from. I'm going to watch uh, as people join. Uh, Gustavo, see you there. Uh, grateful to have you on this morning. Linda, good to see you. You're always on uh, each deep dive. Linda, so grateful to have you. But George, uh, we've got a lot going on in the economy. I know you're going to talk about that. We're going to get to it in just a minute. But, um, you know, may maybe share a little bit of your perspective about what you're excited about just uh, today in, uh, in sharing on the deep dive. Well, David, you are so right. I mean, between you know the 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 dire headlines that sometimes we contend with in the news, right. and really the data coming in, the the real uh, to me uh, attraction right now in the economy is there's so much to track. A, B, there are so many interesting stories to tease out of the data, and for us right. and for our members, right? Especially when it comes to housing. There are some some interesting data points that I think uh, it's it's worth keeping an eye on, especially as we move through April and then on into May. Yeah, yeah. You know, I always think about that, George, the, the old saying that knowledge is power. And there's so much information out there that having the answers uh, to the questions when they're being asked about all the uncertainty in the economy, everything happening is the key. Um, and, uh, and I'm excited about you sharing. So folks uh, are joining. I see them joining right now. Kathy, see you there in the Twin Cities of VET. Uh, great to have you on, Christopher in San Diego. So many people, Jimmy and DFW, so many people across the country joining, George, excited to, uh, to have them on. But, you know, if I were to set up our time together here, we're at the top of the hour, we're going to get started. Uh, George, I just want to take a minute and, and, and say thank you for joining. Uh, you know, for everybody watching uh, that maybe uh, didn't see the announcement, George Ratu here on the Deep Dive, the Chief Economist for Keeping Current Matters. Now, you know, if you're a KCM member, you have access, you have the power of an economist to help you understand, okay, what's happening out there? How do I then simply and effectively communicate that to my clients? So, George, thrilled to have you on the Deep Dive. I know you're going to talk about employment. You're going to talk about how that impacts the supply and demand, all the things happening uh, in the economic world and just in, in, uh, in data and insights affecting real estate. So without that, why don't you take it away and, uh, and get us started? Absolutely, David. Thank you so much. And it's so great to be here on this Monday with, with everyone from all over the country. Uh, in many ways, I am grateful to be able to look at what's happening in the markets, uh, really to keep you, our members, at the uh, center of the market and, in a sense, really help you be the expert in this, uh, this really dynamic market. So with that, let me um, share my screen. What we're going to talk about this morning uh, are the jobs numbers. So we saw the jobs report uh, detailing March come out uh, about a week and a bit ago, and there was some interesting information in that report. And I'll start really with the headline. And the headline was, that the economy adds 260,000 net new jobs in March. On one hand, if you looked at the headlines, the headlines celebrated the fact that the employment landscape, the jobs market, which had been running quite hot for the last roughly two years, was slowing down. All right? That was the, the, the big takeaway. Job market is slowing down. Uh, in a sense, maybe that's good for markets, especially in terms of what the Federal Reserve has been trying to do, which is precisely that, take a lot of the steam out of inflation. And the way the Fed sees it, if they can slow payroll uh, wage gains, they will be able to actually take some of the sting out of prices. For me, however, what was also key in this report was the fact that the economy continued to add jobs. And why do I say that? We have spent the better part of the last eight months or so, since the midpoint of last year, contending 
with headlines, which were really proclaiming the recession is around the corner. Prepare yourself, the recession is around the corner. Why? Well, because the Fed is hiking rates. So for eight months, the headlines have been warning everyone about a recession coming around the corner, which in many ways, uh, more than, than anything, has probably resulted to a lot of people feeling concerned. Yet when I look at the data coming out month after month, what I see is an economy that remains resilient. And what this report shows, we saw solid gains in jobs in the private sector, also in the government. Uh, and when you look professional business services, education and health, leisure and hospitality, right? The hotel restaurant industry, which got really hard hit uh, the, the last two years is regaining jobs. To me, those are good news. In addition, what other, another thing that was highlighted really well in this report, and I think very important for real estate markets, is the fact that the uh, number of unemployed Americans remains quite low. In fact, by and large, most people who want a job and are actively looking for one are currently employed and receiving a paycheck. And speaking of, of unemployment, that is a number that the Federal Reserve tracks very closely. And their main focus is really, they say they have two main mandates, obviously stability in the banking system, but through that, what they want to achieve is full employment or maximum employment and inflation running at 2%. So this unemployment number is something they watch very closely. What you can see, and, and I'm sure many of you are aware of it, the unemployment rate remains at a multi-decade low. So in fact, it dropped from 3.6% in February to 35 in March. And as you can tell, it's been under 4% for over a year now. And to me, the reason I welcome this, it tells me that for most Americans, by and large, their financial situation remains on solid footing. Yes, I'm aware that clouds are brewing, right? Prices are still rising. While we welcomed the slowdown in the consumer price index, meaning prices are growing more slowly, they are still growing. So for a lot of us at grocery stores, that bill is still pretty eye-popping. But as long as I see Americans being employed and drawing a paycheck, I remain on really a more optimistic footing when it comes to the outlook, particularly for the housing market. And when you look across the country, you see that there's a slight nuance to, to this unemployment picture. What you see there's unemployment rates. As of February, those are lagged by two months uh, by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And you see them by state. And what that shows you, number one, you can tell across the country while still well below 5%, which is a really healthy jobs market. But when you look at where the unemployment is slightly higher, you see the West Coast driven really in, in large part by tech centers. Think here, Seattle, San Francisco, Silicon Valley, um, areas where we've seen in the headlines and the numbers, a lot of tech companies have been resorting to layoffs to contain their costs and concerns over the economy. So the, this, this is where executives reacted to the headlines, even though the, the, the situation on the ground, consumer spending didn't warrant it. But you see that you see Austin, and of course, on the East Coast, you see uh, in New York State, Pennsylvania with, with Philly, and we even have Chicago on the Illinois side. What this tells me is, by and large, the rest of the country remains in really healthy shape as far as employment growth is concerned. And beyond tech centers, by and large, businesses continue to hire. Especially important for us in real estate, I pay attention to pay and compensation. And what you see on this chart are basically average hourly earnings for all employees in dollars per hour going back uh, to 2006. And first thing is going to stand out to you is we've seen solid growth in wages um, over this last period. You can tell there was a real spike right after the, the first initial stages of the pandemic. A lot of that had to do with the fact that during the, the thick of it, during the thick of the COVID pandemic, a lot of companies had a hard time attracting workers, so they really had to bump their, their pay. You may remember when restaurant wages went up to 15, 18% an hour in the span of really three to four months. But the good news here is wages continue to grow. Uh, in March, in fact, they were up 4.2%. A moderation. Last year, they were running about 5.5%. And that's what drove the Fed to be concerned about inflation because they figured 
with Americans getting more money in their pocket, they'll be able to actually spend more money in stores, which has been true. So we're seeing a slowdown in that wage growth, which for the Fed is welcome news. For me, at the same time, is also welcome news because it tells me that consumers still have the wherewithal to handle higher prices. And that's very important, especially as we keep an eye towards the rest of the year and any potential clouds gathering on the horizon. So for now, again, the data is showing a resilient economy with a solid job market, which as we head into the spring housing market is critical. And so for me, the big question is, what does the employment uh, report, what do these numbers really mean for housing, right? And here I'm going to look at two factors, demand and supply. And I'll start with demand because in many respects, a solid job market, Americans getting paychecks month after month really ensure solid demand. And you're in the market, you see this every day. You work with buyers, you work with sellers. In many parts of the country, you've seen the, the activity remain quite strong on the demand side during this winter. Yes, mortgage rates have taken a big bite out of a lot of people's ability to get a mortgage. At the same time, with over 44 million young Americans between the ages of 26 and 35, coming of age, looking at home ownership as their next stage of life. You've also seen a solid uh, step up in traffic, unusually so for, for the winter months. So from my standpoint, the job market indicates that we'll have still solid demand for homes uh, in April, May, and June, these critical um, spring months. The big question for me, and I know for you as well, is what's happening on the supply side. And here what we're seeing is active uh, listings um, and looking just at the March, the last seven March for each year, 2017, 18, 19. And what you see is, as you know, March is a critical time for new supply. That's when new listings begin to bump up and they keep growing through May and, and uh, you know April and May. Um, and in a sense, they ensure a really successful, generally summer season. What we're seeing this March is new listings and, and active inventory beginning to pick up, especially compared to 2021, 2022. That's the good news. The less encouraging news remains the fact that by and large inventory is still below pre-pandemic levels. So we have a little ways to go to get enough inventory in the market to satisfy some of the demand. And you see what's happening when you look at active listings, especially comparing them with new listing. So homeowners bringing their homes to market. Um, and here we're seeing that there's been a strong pullback, especially after June of last year. You may remember June marked the peak of the market, prices reached record highs. And there was also the time when mortgage rates began moving higher than, than 5%. So for a lot of homeowners, those early signs made them a little nervous. And many of them uh, understandably pulled back from the market and said, I'm going to sit back and, and try to figure out what's going on. And you see that drop out, especially into December of this last year. For me, the encouraging thing is spring seems to be bringing lots of blooms, lots of renewal. And that's not only true for nature, but also true for housing. We're seeing those new listings begin to bump up. Um, the uh, important thing for us going forward will be to, as especially uh, as you talk to, to homeowners who are, have questions, is this a good time to list? Is this a good time to sell? Is to maybe point out that on the demand side, buyers are still out there. To, to David's point, right? Richmond has been a, a typical example of this spring. I was out uh, you know, on, on Friday looking in, in various neighborhoods in the area. Uh, they were active. New listings had several vehicles. There were buyers lining up to look at new homes. So clearly demand is active. The big, uh, obviously, question is for homeowners, is this a good time? And my answer, by and large, is it still remains a solid uh, time to list and, and sell. And interestingly, I'll highlight this comes from Fannie Mae's survey of home buyers and sellers, and they run it every quarter and ask buyers, this is a good time to buy. And they ask sellers, uh, is this a good time to sell a home? And what jumped out to me, this latest report, was the fact that sellers seem to uh, absorb the fact that the market 
hasn't lost its steam. Uh, the, the feared crash that I think a lot of people talked about last year hasn't materialized. And so I think a lot of them are feeling encouraged by these signs. You see here the percentage of those sellers who said it's a good time to sell a home really ramped up from about 54% to 58% in March. To me, that's a really encouraging signal. Yes, the market is still nowhere near balance. Yes, mortgage rates remain high. But at the same time, what's important to remember, prices have adjusted already from, from uh, June of last year at the peak through uh, February. Prices, at least median sale prices nationally, are down 12%. So we saw a huge adjustment there. At the same time, people's paychecks are still rising. So in terms of affordability, we're actually beginning to dig our way out of where we were late last year. So by and large, for me, this week starts off on a good note when I look at these. And it's something I absolutely wanted to share with you and uh, encourage you to have those conversations with homeowners uh, that might come to you with, with advice. And with yeah. that, I turn it back to David. Yeah, Georgia, it's so, so good. Hey, what, I want to go back to one thing you just said. You said mm -hmm. affordability. So on the slide, you can even go back to that slide if you want to, the uh, rising wages, right? So, so wages are improving. What we know in the last 30 days, too, we've gotten a little bit of relief in mortgage rates. So both of those contributing to affordability um, and, uh, and I think that's, a, that, that's a certainly a very, a very good sign for folks that are out there looking. Absolutely. Um, I agree. In fact, when you look at the monthly payment calculation for a lot of folks, the last two months or so, the math began to change, mm -hmm. meaning they were able to actually qualify for, for a loan. It's worth pointing out, and I know our members are keenly aware of this, mortgage rates have been uh, moving in this, in this window of 6 to 7% for eight months now. Yes, they go up some, some weeks, they come down some weeks, and they've been now down for five straight weeks. But by and large, they've moved in a fairly stable fashion. Uh, meanwhile, wages are still rising. So indeed, when you put all those uh, three items together, prices, incomes, and interest rates together, it's beginning to, to, to look a little more like spring. Yeah, that's a great point. And I think that's a message we want to get out there to, to, to folks, maybe that were looking several months ago, or maybe even looking in the second half of last year and just kind of, kind of re up there and okay, where, where uh, rates at, where, where's your, your home buying journey at? Maybe somebody was thinking about selling their home uh, and kind of going back to that last slide. So George, let's advance to the end before we bring Jess up and uh, see if there are any questions. Uh, this slide right here, the market change, have you adapted? This is an offer that I want to give you um, that will help you understand how to harness the power of KCM in this market right now. You know, the, the, the old, uh, you, know, you know, saying that I've used over the last several weeks, you must be present to win in this market. Having the information, having uh, the insights, and George, you just gave us several to be you know, vocal about maybe to to be talking to people about relative to affordability and what's happening in the economy. Um, there are steps you can take right now to drive more business. We want to give those to you. If you go to trykcm.com forward slash steps now, you can grab that. So Jess, want to pause for a second. Any questions that are that are coming up that we want to uh, give? Hi, Dave and George. Um, I did see one question come through from Cameron who asked, how do we reconcile the fact that such a high percentage of current homeowners have low interest rates from refinancing. Even if they need a different house, they seem hesitant to list. That's an excellent uh, question, Cameron. And, and to your point, I think it's a question which will continue to be with us in, in real estate markets for quite a few years. And, and here, the uh, on one hand, the answer is pretty simple. For many homeowners, right, who may have a uh, sub 3%, 2.6, 2.7%, uh, interest rate, their monthly payment based on that rate is so low that they have a hard time dealing with maybe looking for a trade-off home that's not only more expensive, but comes perhaps with a 6.3% mortgage uh, interest rate, right? And so for I think for a lot of these homeowners, uh, the in the short term, the math is uh, pretty easy, meaning it makes it really challenging for them to uh, to move. At the same time, I think it's worth remembering that 
and you know this firsthand, a lot of people end up uh, transacting a home because of life circumstances changing, stages of life, whether it's a change in jobs, whether it's marriage, whether it's the birth of a first, second, or third child. And so in many cases, uh, and I note having talked to realtors uh, over the last few months, uh, many times uh, homeowners end up doing the math out of necessity and deciding, can I make the new mortgage payment work with my income? Um, and in, in for some of those, the answer is I will simply manage it. Um, but at the same time, I will absolutely give a nod to you, um, Cameron, and say, I think we are seeing a slightly lower volume of transactions because of some of that rate lock effect. Yeah, I think you, I think you said it right there, George, being getting back to the motivation that people have to to make a move. I also I want to add one thing to this. I was um, at an event and there was an agent talking about something they had done with a, a seller that they were working with. And there's an opportunity maybe for uh, many people right now to hold on to that property and turn it into an investment, turn it into rental, and have that help offset a new mortgage payment. So I think there are options there, but no doubt it's uh, it's something people are experiencing. We'll wrap up on that. George, uh, anything that you have to wrap today? Um, thank you so much for joining the deep dive, um, but uh, but any, any final words? Well, I will just remind our members uh, that we'll have more um, market information coming up in the next uh, couple of uh, weeks. We'll have existing home sales, pending home sales, so new fresh uh, indicators to get a pulse on how the market is doing and we'll uh, make sure to keep everybody informed. Perfect. Perfect. Well, uh, as always, we start the week off with a deep dive every Monday morning. So we will see you back next Monday. Have a good week.